Hi guys, welcome to Investigating Diverse City. So in terms of the specific specification, what's the most important thing here is the those four points. So anytime when they ask you about the genetic diversity within or between species, you need to be able to say that you can compare at the species looking at the uh, base sequence of DNA, base sequence of mRNA and the amino acid sequence. What else the examiner might ask you to do? They might ask you to interpret the data and uh, look at the different um, uh, gene technology that could cause the change in the uh, methods of investigating genetic diversity. So um, here again, I keep uh, talking about the standard deviation, but it's really important. So we've got the data. So do the data in table three provide evidence that two populations belong to different species and use calculations of ratios to support your answer. So the ratio they are looking for would be head and body to tail. OK, so that's the ratio that you need to take. So standard deviations of means of the body, OK, they overlap. OK, so if the standard deviation, as you can see here, OK, overlap, uh, the uh, calculations uh, or, or the calculations will suggest that there is no significant difference. And once you do the ratio head and body to the tail, you will see uh, the, uh, the ratio will be similar as well. So almost those species were, are identical. So they have same body shape proportions. OK, so there is no significant difference here. So genetic diversity within or between species can be uh, made by comparing what we say the frequency of measurable of observated uh, characteristics, base sequence of DNA, mRNA, and finding the sequence of amino acids. So uh, what are the uh, uh, what are the limitations then of looking at the characteristics that you can only see? So the characteristics that you can observe. OK, so those characteristics obviously are determined by gene or genes. OK, and the uh, environmental influences as well. So you can only see those, but you don't know what's the genetics behind them. So limitations of looking at those characteristics will be the large number of them are coded by more than one gene. We could be dealing with polygenetic. The, the, there will be the difficulty to the, uh, look at the differences from one another. Characteristics might be modified by environment, so uh, we're not going to be actually looking at the specific gene specific values. And also we've got the technology now in place, which will help us to actually look at the uh, relationship uh, due to the genes rather than just the characteristics that we can observe. So it's uh, better to look at the differences, com look at the comparing DNA based sequences, because we've got many techniques that, are, uh, that could actually extract order of nucleotides on DNA. And DNA uh, sequencing is done by automatic machines and data is produced straight away into the computer. So you could have different colors, but obviously we don't need to know about that, that will code for the specific basis of DNA. And the series of those colored bands produ are produced to measure the genetic diversity and evolution relationship between those species. So we can compare the species, uh, species using that method. The only limitation will be the mutation, which obviously is going change the sequence of DNA nucleotides uh, within that specific uh, DNA that we will be sequencing. So uh, looking at the sequence of uh, mRNA, uh, obviously we know that mRNA is complementary to DNA strand and we can measure DNA diversity. So genetic diversity again could be made by looking only at the sequence of mRNA. Then finally, we've got amino acid sequence. Why can we do it? Because obviously the amino acids are determined by sequence of mRNA and DNA. So we can obviously use that sequence to count the number of similarities or differences in each sequence. So here we've got the originality 
uh, classification was limited to things we could observe. So today we can obviously use DNA and proteins. And uh, what we need to remember about this is the fact that species can be classified into different taxonomic groups based on their similarities or differences. And this can be only done by looking at the DNA and proteins. And more closely related organisms will have more similar DNA and proteins. So comparing proteins can be done in two ways. And uh, firstly, we could compare amino acid sequence. So this we know that a proteins, the primary structure of the protein uh, is the sequence of amino acids and the sequence of amino acids is coded for by DNA. So the closer the DNA, the more closely related the proteins. We could use this for immunology as well. So we could be looking at, uh, for example, the antibodies, because they are obviously proteins. And um, biologists can use also use protein structure to investigate the relationship between different species and explain how. So again, just more the answer. So more closely related, okay, we have more similarities in amino acid sequence. So in the primary structure, in the uh, same protein, amino acid sequence is related to DNA sequence basis. Or we could say that similar species have a similar immune response to a protein. Okay, and more closely related species produce more precipitate antibody antigen complexes, for example. Or second method, okay, so hybridization or DNA sequencing. So what is this DNA sequencing? It's directly comparing DNA by looking at the order of the bases. So the related, closely related species will have a higher percentage of similarity or DNA hybridization. This is the process uh, where DNA from two species is collected, heated and separated into single strands. Because the heat is going to break hydrogen bonds between the DNA bases, hence we can separate those. And two separated species DNA is mixed and allowed to cool. This allows hydrogen bonds to reform between complementary bases. So the more closely, uh, more similar the base sequence is, the more hydrogen bonds will be reformed. And the similarity is measured by heating the hybrid strands and recording the temperature required to separate the strands. So the higher the temperature required, the more hydrogen bonds that existed and they are more closely related. Uh, they have the more closely related DNA. So that's everything for the investigations. See you later.